here's a blaster you probably didn't know was coming out. I don't blame you. When I found this one, I did a Google search and couldn't find anything on it. But this is a Star Wars Episode Eight blaster. So, uh, yeah. Why do I have this? Well, I got it at the same time I picked up the Judge. And I almost didn't pick it up because it looks almost identical to a blaster that came out not too long ago. There's a picture right here. I don't remember the name of it, but it was an AR-15 style pistol. This is not that, although it looks like that. And when I say it's not that, at least physically it's not that, although in spirit it definitely is. And, unlike when I picked up the Judge, I got some stuff with this one. Namely, the darts in question, which were wrapped. I unwrapped them for brevity's sake. And more importantly, I got the instructions which is great because it tells us what this blaster is because the blaster itself does not tell us what this is other than Star Wars, a bunch of warning stuff, and then a copyright of 2016 from Hasbro. I mean, that seems kind of early too. And yeah, that says 2016. But as far as I know, I can't find anything on this blaster. So I assume it's a Star Wars Episode Eight blaster and it is the Poe Dameron blaster. I haven't seen Star Wars Episode 7 or Rogue One, not because I don't like Star Wars, I just don't really watch movies all that often. I'm usually too busy doing something else. So, yeah. Now, from looking at the blaster, you can tell it's probably nothing special. There is one thing I do like about this blaster that's better than pretty much anything else, but we'll get to that. It has a tactical rail, a plunger, and a trigger, and glow strike darts, and you've already figured this one out. You load one dart into the barrel, you pull back the plunger and release, blaster will charge the glow strike dart, and then you pull the trigger to fire, and there's where you put in the one AA battery that goes into the grip to power the internals inside, which are, well, lights and sounds. That's it. Nothing super special, and this is, again, almost identical to that blaster that came out some time ago, but it is different enough. I wish I, I have one. TJ Banks was lovingly sent me one, and I don't know where it is. It used to be next to my desk, and then I put it away, and now I can't find it. But anyway, this thing, since I'm pretty sure I'm like the first person to get my hands on one of these, I have the chance to bestow upon it a coveted award of comfiest grip ever made in a blaster. Seriously. This is so friggin' comfy of a blaster, I don't even know where to begin. Just look at that. Probably because it looks identical to a real pistol grip with the beaver tail and everything, but it just feels right. It's huge, it's great for big and small hands, it'll work for everybody, and it is beautiful. And the, the, another thing I really like about this is that it's not immediately apparent how it works. I mean, yeah, you can tell there's something back here, but it doesn't have like an obvious priming handle or anything like that. You actually prime it by putting your finger in there, Pulling that back, and yes, that is the absolute length of the draw. And then the barrel will charge up, and then you put a dart in there. And it's supposed to charge up the dart because they glow in the dark? I guess? I don't know. It's obviously too bright for me to even check that, and I don't think these are really good glow-in-the-dark darts anyway. But the point is, then you pull the trigger and it fires, and then it makes that awesome sound, and there's lights on the side that turn on. That will never get old. This is one of the best sounding blasters I've seen in the Star Wars line. Um, according to Brett, it sounds very much like the original blasters, and I do have to agree with him on that one. It's a pretty darn cool thing, but of course the performance is absolutely terrible. I mean, this thing is a jolt for all intents and purposes. Now, it's not actually a jolt. It's just suspiciously similar to one. I mean, look at the side again, the length. It's like an inch of draw. The performance on this thing is not great. It's serviceable. I mean, anything above end strike ranges is serviceable, but this is not elite ranges. This is about a little bit better than jolt ranges, I would say. And that's probably just because it's the same size plunger, just in a direct, you know, line. It it works. I mean, for what it is, it does work. I think the one thing this is going to be good for is internals for something else, or, well, externals for something else. The shell is beautiful. There's quite a bit of room in here to shove any kind of plunger you would want to put in there. The priming mechanism would have to be replaced, and even if you didn't, just from a, like, cosmetic kind of, uh, how would you put it, a, uh, a replica standpoint, this is pretty darn good. This looks absolutely awesome. It does look like a Star Wars blaster, and again, I haven't seen the actual blaster yet, but I would have to assume that this is ex pretty close to what the one on screen will be, only the one on screen will probably be black with brushing and stuff on it. You get it. This is a really, really comfy blaster, though, and that's about all it's probably going to be good for. 
Maybe that too. I never get tired of that. <laughs> Let me know what you think about the Poe Dameron Blaster down in the comment section below. This is a uh, quite a treat to see something this early. I'm not quite sure what else to do with it, but if you have an idea, I'd be open to hearing it. This has been Walcom S7's Hands. Thank you very much for watching this video, and of course, I hope to see you in an entirely different one.